don't make no I don't make no difference. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, you can be turning there. Good to be with you all. Romans chapter 8. Had a good visit with Lauren this weekend. I left her crying in Tybee. Misses her daddy, I miss her too, but uh, we had a good time. and uh, Thankful to come over here and meet with you all. Uh, for a while. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 will start. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are saved, well, get that. but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit of life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You be seated. I'm going to preach to you for a while this morning. On this question, are you in your right mind? I've been asked that before. You may have too. Are you in your right mind? Well, are you? It's a serious question. Isn't it? Are you in your right mind? As the children of God, are you in your right mind? If you're unsaved here this morning, what kind of mind do you have? Well, I believe our text answers plainly uh, what we're talking about. Our text reveals two minds the spiritual mind and the carnal mind. Now you can find a doctor or a psychiatrist somewhere and they might give you a whole list uh, of what kind of mind you might have. Uh, you know, we have people that uh, have uh, multiple personalities. You know, that's, that's different kind of minds and, and all this. But the Bible says there are two minds. Uh, when, it, when it comes down to it. The carnal and the spiritual. And we find that there's a great difference between the two. A modern religion may try and convince you otherwise, but the Bible declares there are two minds. The saved have one mind, and the unsaved have another mind. We read in our text that the carnal mind is death. To be carnally minded is to be dead. When Adam and Eve fell in the garden and became totally depraved, 
they, their minds turn from spiritual minds to carnal minds. And their carnal minds were death. A death sentence came on them because of that. And not only them, but all of mankind. By being born into this world with this carnal mind, we uh, have a uh, sentence upon us except the grace of God intervene that we're doomed and stand before God in judgment except God give us a spiritual mind. We need to this morning as we think about this, not only uh, receive instruction as the children of God concerning this matter, but we also at the, aim, the same time ought to uh, grow weary of the old carnal mind. And the old carnal mind ought to become sickening to us to the point that we would steer clear of it as much as we possibly can. The carnal mind and things pertaining to that are one of the biggest problems that you and I have as the children of God. <coughs> You understand that? We don't need an army of demons trailing us around and giving us problems to be troubled in this life, but the old carnal man that uh, still lingers around gives us trouble to the point that we can't serve God as we ought to and we can't even enjoy our Christian life as we ought to. What well, joy it is to be a child of God, to be saved and uh, our sins forgiven and have the fellowship of uh, like-minded saints of God. What a great joy that is. But many times the old man uh, messes with our minds and uh, there's that allure back to the past and back to the sinfulness of this life that robs us of our great joy. David prayed for the restoration of his joy, didn't he? Uh, because of his sin, he was down and out and he was troubled and distressed and uh, couldn't be as happy as he once was. And so God help us that uh, not only do we just get information uh, this morning, but uh, that God shows us something and teaches us something as far uh, as our lives are concerned. Now the carnal mind, uh, as we read, is not pleasing to God. In verse 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The carnal mind will never please God. It never has. But boy, we hear out here uh, how uh, people are saying that uh, that very thing is possible. They're saying that uh, no matter what you do, no matter how you live, no matter how you act, that you're always pleasing to God. And that's not so. This world is not pleasing to God. It can be. Well, you take a world out here that, uh, that last night were uh, reveling in the bars and screaming and yelling and carrying on and carousing around. Does that please God? Does the filthy language that they use and uh, and laugh about, does that please God? No matter what it is, even a supposed worship with a carnal mind cannot 
please God. Those in the flesh. Takes a supernatural work of God to please God. The wisest of all men are mere fools. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. You know, the carnal mind spends all of its time denying God and denying the Word of God and setting themselves out to please God in sin. That's foolish. That's foolish to do that. And my brethren, it'd be foolish for you and I to ever think that in this flesh, in the old carnality, that we could please God. You and I please God in serving Him in the thus saith the Lord. That's how we please God. And certainly it ought to be our utmost desire to please God. But sometimes it's not, is it? Sometimes it's, I want what I want here regardless. That's carnal. That kind of thinking and that kind of mind has doomed millions to the fires of hell. If you're saved, you got a spiritual mind. And you ought to exercise that spiritual mind rather than the carnal. The carnal mind, we find, hates the ways of God. The Bible tells us there is none righteous, no, not one. Why? Because the carnal mind hates that. Not only does the carnal mind hate God, but it hates the Word of God. It hates the ways of God. It hates the people of God. You see, there's just nothing there. All these preachers and these churches out here, they're trying to work with carnal minds and trying to mold them into something that pleases God. It doesn't happen. It can't work. It's an impossibility, according to our text. The carnal mind is deceitful. You know, you and I at times are tempted and deceived, aren't we? And somebody or something always out there wanting to deceive you into thinking something is right when it's wrong. And when you give in to that, you're giving in to the old carnal way of thinking. Exercise your spiritual mind. The carnal mind is not subject to the law of God, we find in verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You see the futility of trying to make Christians. You can't make Christians. Come over to our church and we'll make a good Christian out of you. No, you won't. No, you won't. Well, we'll be a good influence to them and we'll show them the right way and, uh, and all this. They won't believe it. And they won't follow it. Maybe for a while. Why is it that people come and go? 
Many of them have made a profession with a carnal mind and then have returned to the longings of the flesh. They just can't take it anymore. They can't stand it anymore. So we see the, uh, the seriousness of it. The carnal mind is unwilling. Unwilling to serve God and love God or anything else. Two different minds, two complete different minds people have. We see that the carnal mind cannot please God, will not please God, and is always contrary to God. Verse 7 says the carnal mind is enmity against God. There's no coming together of the minds. Now over the motel, Brother Gene and I had a meeting of the minds. But we had the same kind of mind. You know. God and the carnal man or woman have two different kinds of minds. And they don't get along. And they're enemies even. Uh, one toward the other. So, uh, to be carnal then is to be dead. Years ago, somebody came up with the term carnal Christian the carnal Christian theory, and there was a book written about it, and, and uh, there was a big uh, to-do about that uh, for a while. Well, some people thought it was a, a new idea, but there's nothing new about the carnal mind, and there's nothing new about the carnal mind uh, trying to uh, please God. That's, that's not a new thing. It's an old thing uh, of the devil. You know, when he tempted Eve, you know, he was trying to convince Eve that you know, God uh, wants you to be happy and God wants you to be like he is. And, uh, you know, if you just eat this fruit, well, that can happen, you know. And she... Uh, fell for that. It sounded good to her, you know. But there is no such thing as a true carnal Christian. And we admit, we admit that the old man gives us trouble. And we admit that uh, you know, sometimes we, we look back and maybe miss things or get involved in things that we ought not to. But if that's your life, if that's all of your desire, then I would worry about you. For those who are not saved are totally uh, carnally minded and the things of the Spirit uh, cannot be received or comprehended according to our text. They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. We find that the 
unregenerate, the carnal, as they oppose God always, and the people of God, the things of God, it's the opposite for the spiritual mind. They're different. I know a lot of Christian people that are different. And you go around them and they love to see you. And they love to talk about the things of the Lord. And it seems like that's just what they do. That's who they are. You know, I tend to believe that how you talk and what you talk about and what you're interested in tells who you are. I've known some people who have professed to be saved and all they ever talk about is the things of the world, totally. That's all they talk about. I know some who have been saved for years and they've had no relationship with God to talk about in all those years. They just talk about who's in the Super Bowl, who's in the World Series, and all about work and all about this and that. There's nothing there. So what kind of mind do you have? I believe it comes out. Your mind controls what you believe and how you believe. It controls how uh, you feel about the things of God. And it's evidence of God working in your life. He saves you, gives you a new mind. And I'm not guessing about that, I know. I know from experience. You know from experience. You know what you were, and you know what you are. And then nobody going to convince you uh, that God did not change you. And that your mind uh, leans and goes towards the spiritual things rather than the carnal. The carnal mind has all of its affections and <coughs> desires and hopes and dreams in the world. Brother Gene, a while ago, told a woman at the motel that uh, his hope uh, was in heaven. Wasn't here. It's in heaven. And he told her that because he believed that. You know. I don't know what she believed. And I don't know where her hope was. And all of that. But I know where his was. He was talking about. It was in his mind. And uh, that's the way the spiritual minded individual lives. Now the spiritual mind is contrary to the carnal mind mainly because it is led by the Spirit of God. Going down to verse 14 of chapter 8 it says for as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God. <laughs> The carnal out in this world are not led by the Spirit of God. And you can use that for a gauge in your life. You know, sometimes people say things that they ought not to say. They just do. We do. Sometimes we might bite somebody's head off instead of being nice and kind and comforting to them. 
A good gauge is that is who you reckon led you to say that. Was it God? Was it God that led you to, uh, to say something you shouldn't? Was it God that led you to go someplace you shouldn't? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 16 says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. How do we know we're the children of God? The Spirit of God leads us. And the Spirit of God shows us. And the Spirit of God tells us that we are the children of God. That's a constant. It's a constant. Because the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit. To be spiritually minded is to have life. The carnal mind is death. And the spiritual mind is life. You can't have life without a spiritual mind. Many people are trying to go to heaven with a carnal mind. You go to heaven with a spiritual mind because God has changed you. <clears throat> and God is preparing you to go to heaven right now. Well, you're going to have a whole lot better mind than what you have now. I don't know how much you think of yourself now. I don't think much of myself. I just, I just don't. And... I know one of these days we're going to be changed so much that a life that we're living now uh, would seem horrible you know, to us when we get to heaven. When our minds are changed like unto his mind. But to be spiritually minded is to have life. To produce those things that pertain to life, Amen. not death. The carnal mind uh, revolves around death. I don't know how many people got shot and killed in this area uh, last night, whether there was any or not. You know, a lot of that goes on. You mentioned that school shooting. That was a carnal mind that did that. A carnal mind that uh, revolves around death. Spiritually minded people wouldn't do such a thing. You know, people do things that, that you and I can't even comprehend. It doesn't even register with us. So to be spiritually minded is life. The Bible teaches us that it's the spirit that quickeneth and the flesh profiteth nothing. It's the spirit of God who has quickened us unto salvation in the new birth given us a mind to love God and to serve God. Just the opposite of what we were. Now some people are right on the edge, aren't they? We'll live right on the edge. And some people you think, well, are those people saved or not? 
you know. They say one thing, but they, they do something else, and uh, you, you just borderline, and you think, what are they? Has God born them again? Or are they too much involved in the carnal things of this life? In Galatians chapter 5 and, and uh, verse 17. Paul talked about this. It says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Talking about that battle going on. And then he mentions in verse 19 the works of the flesh, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before as I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now these are all carnal things. Yet here's Paul talking about the flesh lusting against the spirit. How dangerous. Even how horrible That these things are still lingering around. Now somebody had an affair with so and so's wife. Did you hear about that? Ha ha ha! And go right along and laugh with them. And they don't know to be. That's not being spiritually mad. You know. That's what we're dealing with as far as the old man is concerned. Do you pray about your mind? You know, people are awful, are awful quick to go to a doctor and say, Doc, I got something wrong. I got a buzzing in my head. I can't get rid of it. I need some help. But very reluctant to go to the Savior and say, Lord, I've got a problem. I'm thinking something I shouldn't be thinking. And I know my flesh is weak and I need you. Would you help me? You'd think that'd be the first thing we'd do. We'd go to the great physician that has all power to heal and, and do whatever. <coughs> Instead of just letting it go and letting it go and letting it go until something bad happens. We read what that old carnal mind is. That's what it is. It doesn't look very good, does it? To be Spiritually minded is to feel the presence of the spirit. And the carnal minded, they can't do that. They just can't do it. They can't get comfort. They can't get help. They can't get wisdom. They can't get anything. Because they're at enmity with God. They're carnally mad. They're dead. You, on the other hand, 
are enabled to feel the presence of the Spirit of God. You ever just sit around and think, how in this world did I ever make it without God? Did you ever go through things and, and just feel helpless and, uh, and hopeless and then feel the presence of God? You can't see him wrap your arms around you, but you can sure feel it. Spiritually minded people have the ability uh, to feel his presence as we read there in verse 14 of all goes for as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God. That means something to be a child of God. These children back here have mamas and daddies. Granddaddies and grandmas, they know what that means. They know what that experience is. One of them gets hurt, they're not going to come running to me. They're going to go to mom or dad, grandma or grandpa or somebody. We know what that's like as the children of God uh, to have that relationship. All believers have the Spirit of God. Verse 9 said, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So there's a big difference. Uh, and again, uh, the, the purpose this morning was not to uh, just throw out some information. I think sometimes people take the Bible that way. They just get information. Uh, but they don't do anything with that information. So are you in your right mind this morning? Are you confident in this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ? Are you confident in that? Are you happy about that? Do those thoughts run your life and rule your life? Well, these carnally minded folk, they, they, they don't even good thought to that. Somebody told them they're saved and they're on their way to heaven. That's all. That's it. That's it. Everything else is this world. God helps uh, with our minds. And if you need help with your mind, go to Jesus. <coughs> go to the church. But then go to the Lord with you. And help. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. We've, we've come to the point nowadays where we don't need help. We're too independent of God and everyone else. We, need, we all need help time to time. And he's ready to help. Thank you.